I have three important tasks to perform this morning. Thing number one is to thank you very much for coming and giving us your time and attention today. And I do that on behalf of both all of Do It, Teaching and Learning with Technology, and the School of Professional Development. This is a jointly sponsored event. We're thrilled to have you here today, and we want to thank you very much for coming. Thing number two, if I could pretty please, I always like to thank all the people who did the work to make this event happen, and I'm not going to try and list them by name, but you kind of know who they are implicitly. If you get a chance to thank them at some point during the day for all their hard work, because what you're going to find is we have a spectacular agenda, we have lots of presentations. Thank you very much for all the hard work that went into this event. And finally, and with extreme pleasure, it's my pleasure to introduce a person you probably already know. And with his kind permission, I'm going to take a very informal and short approach to the introduction. Because clearly he is a scholar, a teacher, and a researcher of immense prowess. And I could stand up here and lecture to you endlessly about his CV. But I'm not going to take that approach. I'm simply going to say, we're thrilled to have the Chief Academic Officer for the University, our Provost, Dennis, with us today. And it's useful for two reasons. Thing number one is he has immense energy and vision in this area that we want to capture and allow you to hear directly. This is an important endeavor. And it's not truly new because lots of people at Stony Brook have been doing online, distance, blended hybrid education for many years. But we stand at the precipice of change, and it's always good when you're facing big change to look around and figure out where you want to go and what you want to do. And I can tell you from a personal perspective that no one is more engaged on a daily basis in thinking about our academic future than Dennis is. The other reason it's highly appropriate to ask him to speak first is because he is a teacher and a researcher and a scholar. And his actual work involves things like propulsion. So he's very good at making things go, which is highly appropriate for this particular <laughs> audience. But I can tell you for a fact, he's been deeply engaged in our discussions. He is helping us lead the charge to figure out where we want to go, what we want to be, how to engage this opportunity. He's actually taught in many different media and methodologies. He's done online teaching already, so he's not a newcomer or a babe in the woods to this endeavor. And I think you'll find his remarks both engaging and energizing and a great way for us to start today. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our Provost Dennis Asanas to the stage. I like the fast way. Thanks, Chuck, uh, for those wonderful words. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues from uh, Stony Brook University, friends uh, from other SUNYs. Uh, I also want to welcome uh, Kari Hatch, who is with us today from uh, uh, SUNY, for all you do. Uh, let's give Kari a hand. I want to especially welcome uh, new colleagues that we have here at Stony Brook who are just starting the academic year. Uh, I see lots of familiar faces, I've hired all of you, as you know. Uh, and just to give you a perspective, when I got here, we had 620 faculty members on West Campus. Today, uh, we have hired since I arrived 113 new faculty members. That's quite a bit, you know, in two years. You can imagine. How many lunches and dinners do you have to do? Because probably for everyone we have, we interview three or four or five, because we want the absolute best people. So you all uh, were here with us, uh, joined the workforce, so you know, you should be very proud. And again, let's give all of them a hand, all the newcomers. <laughs> and last but not least, I want to uh, extend my thanks to 
all of those who have worked hard to organize this event, uh, the keeping from uh, our school from for professional development, uh, the former dean Paul Edelson and the interim dean Tom Sexton and the crews, uh, and of course uh, uh, all the people who are associated with our teaching, learning for technology, uh, Patricia Seves, uh, obviously Chuck Power, and uh, and others. Uh, we, we thank you very, very much. So I want to make some uh, uh, brief remarks today, as uh, Chuck already told you. The idea of online education is front and center in our academic agenda. Our vision is to basically leverage uh, online technology and all those uh, new channels of uh, information and communication to enhance the teaching and learning outcomes at Stony Brook University. We want to leverage technology to, to help us teach our students better. And when we say students, students are all over the world. They're not just the ones that we see here. You know, we have uh, now a new concept of what a student is. So the lines between professional education uh, and lifelong learning and residential campus education have become a lot more blurry, as you all can appreciate. Clearly, a more robust educational experience, one that uh, we assess the quality of everything we do, is, is critical for us, because we do want to enhance our, our image as a leader uh, in pedagogy here at Stony Brook, and obviously contribute greatly to the concept uh, of uh, the SUNY Open and Systemness that our, our Chancellor has championed. So collaboration is key to, to catalyze this new era at uh, Stony Brook, this new era in pedagogy, teaching, and learning. We have had a, a record of success uh, within our university for years when it comes to the space of uh, online learning. And again, online learning, I view it as very broad, ranging from uh, distant uh, education to the new forms of network and much more collaborative education. Uh, I can uh, cite just a few examples at, at the risk uh, of obviously omitting some of you were in the room and then you would be upset. Uh, but uh, pardon us, you know, because we do value everybody. But I, I will cite the great work we've done on online uh, biology. We have here Joan Souza and uh, Paul Bingham. I'd like to cite the work that we've done with uh, putting online the first complete curriculum in electrical engineering that Wendy Tang has led. You know, this is an amazing development. I know Wendy is somewhere in the room. I've seen her before. Hi, Wendy. Um, you know, not only we have now a complete curriculum online, but you know, Wendy has this amazing idea where she managed to work with people from uh, Buffalo and Bingham. You know, that's not easy. While we love our brothers and sisters from SUNY, people know that it's uh, always a challenge when you bring more people into the design of the curriculum. And then we have other community colleges and people across the state where we want to make access to electrical engineering curriculum and laboratories. You know, people are male kids, so they have the lab at home. You know, that's like an amazing thing. And so I want to especially acknowledge Wendy's efforts. And of course, uh, beyond those, uh, we've been working with our School of Nursing for many years. I don't know if anybody in the room here is from the School of Nursing, but uh, <laughs> morning. Um, we have been able to, to, to bring together in uh, our instruction for nursing, which is uh, world class, and everybody knows about uh, distance education in nursing, uh, experiences that are hybrid, where people come and spend time on campus. Uh, which is a, a very interesting concept. Uh, beyond those, uh, we've been uh, forging ahead in areas uh, such as uh, nutrition uh, management. We have both uh, a master's degree as well as uh, certificates that uh, we're offering through uh, the, the great work uh, uh, that uh, is happening um, uh, and in nutrition. And then um, last but not least, we have the first MOOC, and I know that everybody here in the room knows what MOOC is, but maybe if there's somebody who does not know, these are the massive online open courses. So we have uh, now finally captured the first uh, uh, Stony Brook made MOOC, 
with 5,000 students in computational arts, and Meg Shadell, I believe, is in the room. So where is Meg? And I very much like her concept because uh, you know what we can do is not only offer it to the world, but first and foremost also offer it to our own Stony Brook students. And so while everybody else gets it for free, <coughs> people here at Stony Brook actually get the live interaction from a very lively instructor. And uh, obviously they, they get the opportunities for uh, discussion sections and tutorials and uh, online chats and everything that goes with. So this is the way to go. I really want to emphasize that uh, I was very inspired to explore this uh, space uh, of uh, online education from uh, my modest beginnings, you know, when I was at Michigan for 17 years before. And uh, I was uh, one of the GM's first global lecturers where I taught uh, internal combustion engines online to people at various distant sites that General Motors had across the state of Michigan, across the U.S., but also across the world. And to this day, I find, uh, you know, at the places that I can't even think of, you know, people that said, they come from India, they come from China, and they said, you're a very famous lecturer, you know, we have all your lectures, uh, you know, in our company, in our garage, in our home, wherever. Of course, uh, let me just say that I've, I've made no penny out of it. You know, most of that has been pirated illegally, but nonetheless, that gave me quite a bit of reputation. And there's something to it. And, and of course, impact and reach, which is really critical. So, when I came to Stony Brook, I really wanted to see how we can engage the tremendous number of people who are enthusiastic about experimenting with new ways of uh, teaching and learning and pedagogy. And, and clearly, the audiences are, are diverse and many, and in my view, we wanted to start somewhere. So since uh, there was this tsunami of activity related to the MOOCs, uh, last year, just like every other provost on Earth, I appointed a joint task force with the Senate uh, to basically look into the massive online open courses and explore what their position should be and what their strategy should be. There was great work that happened out of the committee that was led by Eduardo Mendiera and Wendy Tan. And um, a fantastic report, 20 plus people worked on it day and night for four months. And uh, the quality of it uh, is apparent. It is online, as it's fitting. And I welcome all of you to visit our website and, uh, and read the report and the recommendations. I have to say that we're following those recommendations, uh, but obviously we're not going to stop there. The first one was to produce uh, the name five, five courses to turn into a MOOC, and one of them was computational arts, so we have been working that. Another thing that uh, came live and clear out of the report was the need to basically establish uh, a new position, somebody who would orchestrate our strategy, work closely with me and President Stanley, to basically capture all this enthusiasm and energy and broaden it uh, from uh, MOOCs to everything where online strategies, uh, pedagogies can come together. So we've created the position of an associate provost for online learning. And Eric Rapkin, who is sitting back there, Eric, could you please stand up so that people can. So Eric has uh, joined us uh, uh, from the University of Michigan, where he was for the past 40 years, and he thought he would be there for the next 20 or so. But uh, I had a different idea. So we, we managed to basically steal uh, Eric from uh, Michigan. Um, Eric uh, produced the first uh, MOOC on humanities uh, in the world. And he teaches, among other things, writing and rhetoric. And who said you cannot do that uh, and turn it into a MOOC? Um, and he had about 100,000 students. I don't know how you did it, but uh, you know, and that has been offered, I understand, three times. Uh, well, here we're going to do bigger, better things. We're not going to just reproduce the, the Michigan MOOC. Uh, we have already started ideas to turn uh, uh, his experience into three other MOOCs. But there are many, many others uh, here in the room, uh, from the business school to engineering, including myself, who like to produce uh, MOOCs. Now, beyond that, we feel that there is a great space for online learning in terms of what we do here at Stony Brook, in terms of our own residential experience for our students. 
we feel that uh, hybrid courses and blended courses are an amazing place where we can leverage uh, the online technology. And for that matter, we have uh, started uh, the process of forming an online learning laboratory where the faculty can come together and with uh, Eric's leadership and uh, Chuck's uh, great involvement, we hope that we will be able to basically invite all of you, teachers, uh, students, friends, to help with us to, to design, experiment, explore, hands on, how to, to leverage this approach, this new technology, and create the best possible pedagogy. I wanted to emphasize that uh, one of the biggest outcomes that we expect you know, in leveraging these new approaches is we'll do assessment in a much, much more effective way. It is amazing when you look at the statistics and information that you can actually harvest uh, from uh, the online learners and try to embed that type of information <coughs> into the redesign, uh, the reinvigoration, if you will, of our curriculum in many areas. I can go on and on and on, but that's why we have a full conference here. So you should uh, think about all those issues and come back to us with uh, concrete ideas, answers, proposals, uh, programs that we can uh, explore, both here locally, but also within the SUNY Open, which is about to be launched uh, in January, and I'm sure that uh, Kari will uh, talk more about it. So welcome to Stony Group. I hope you have a great experience today, and I also hope that this is not the last time we see you, and I hope that next time we see you, there'll be twice as many of you. So, thank you very much, and uh, best for the day, and best for the academic year. Thank you. <laughs>